In this video, I will be providing you with enough information so that you can cut your own shed roof rafters, no matter how far they're going to be sloping. And of course, I need to bring up the point that I have built roofs like these before without cutting any seat cuts in them. And to give you a better idea what I'm talking about, you're only going to be taking about an eighth of an inch out of this 2x8 to create the roof rafter. Seat cut. And of course the seat cut will be located on both ends of the roof rafter and will end up looking something like this. So just a small notch out of the 2x8 or whatever material you're using for your roof rafters. And after you have one laid out, you can use that as a pattern to mark and cut the rest of the rafters. Now before we continue, I just want to provide a brief description of what we're actually doing, how you create a shed roof. And that's usually going to be by having one wall taller than the other wall. So the wall on the right side is going to be 6 inches shorter than the wall on the left side in our example. And since the span of the building is 12 feet, then that's going to provide us with a half inch per foot slope. And the minimum for this building would be a three inch difference in the walls, providing us with a quarter of an inch per slope. And if for whatever reason that kind of doesn't make sense, I can give you a better idea by telling you that we have a 12 foot span. And if there was a 12 inch difference in the wall height, then we would have a one inch per foot slope in our roof. And hopefully that makes sense. Take a look at our seat cut again. Eighth of an inch is the distance here, along with three and a half inches here that would represent the width of the framing plates. Next up, let's take a look at what the roof rafter would look like after it was cut sitting on top of the building foundation. And again, this is just to provide you with another point of view that might be helpful for you trying to figure out just exactly what we're doing. And of course, here's the six inch difference, which is represented by four one and a half inch thick wall framing plates, or should I say two by fours? And since we're going to be using the building foundation to lay out our roof rafters, and as you can see here, we have it positioned in the desired slope in the same way it would have been when it was up on its side, except for now we've laid it down flat on top of the building foundation. So here we have our six inch difference, and we're going to use this line here to represent the difference in the height of the wall framing plates to lay out the roof rafter. Now this is where you need to pay attention because you need to line up the edge of your roof framing lumber before the seat cut is cut at this point here with the building foundation edge and not this point here and you'll see a little bit more of that here in a little bit because it's going to be more common for everyone to line up this section of the lumber with the corner of the building foundation and in reality it's not going to make that big of a deal when it's all said and done if you do make that mistake so again our six inches and how it's lining up here with the building foundation Next up, let's go ahead and get started with our first method. And with our first method, we are going to lay out the six inch marks on the building foundation on one side and on the other side. Then we are going to position the roof rafter materials that do not have any seat cuts in them yet in the proper position. Now in this example here, I'm going to go ahead and line up the top edge of the roof rafter with this point here, which is the point we need to line it up with. We don't line it up with this edge. We're going to line it up with the other side. This is the point we're going to line it up with as you can see here. Otherwise, we're not going to be cutting a notch out for our roof rafter. And hopefully that makes sense. Next up, let's cut a couple of two by fours and you'll need to make sure that the corners are square or at least this one here is square or a 90 degree angle from this edge here. And these can be however long you want them to be. Just make sure that this edge of the block lines up with this edge of the building foundation and that this point of the block lines up with this corner of the roof rafter because we're going to use this right here to lay out and mark the seat cut for our roof rafter and we can see it right there we have our nice seat cut and of course what it would look like 
if it was notched out. Have our little cut there and hopefully that makes sense. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom here to provide you with the reason why we need to line this part of the roof rafter materials up with this point here. And you could always measure over. If you have a wall framing plate that's three and a half inches wide, then you could always just make a mark here so that you can line this part of the roof framing lumber up with this point here and not this point here so that you can lay it out and mark it properly. So again, just a Another view of it there what it should look like when you're lining it up so you're gonna line it up with those two points this one here so that you can lay out the upper seat cut and of course the one at the bottom otherwise you won't be able to lay out the bottom seat cut and I'm not suggesting you won't be able to lay it out because you could simply transfer the mark from the top to the bottom and it's going to be close enough on a low slope. However, that might not work out the same with a steeper slope. Now I've worked my way up to the grand finale and that of course is going to be this method here I think is going to work the best because the previous method might make it difficult to lay out and mark the bottom seat cut. So in this method, instead of working from this side of the roof rafter, we're going to work from the other side with our 2 by 4 so let's go ahead and give you an idea of what the rafter looks like with the seat cuts and laying them on top of two 2 by 4s And again, these 2 by 4s can be however long you need to make them, depending upon the slope of your roof. And of course, we can see where we're lining it up with this edge here. So let's go ahead and start with our regular lumber that doesn't have any seat cuts in it. And with our 2x4 sitting on top of the concrete foundation, that is nice and square. And with the edges lined up with both sides of the building foundation, we can now position our roof framing lumber at the top and the bottom. There's our 6 inches. At the corner, remember we need to line it up with this side. So again, you can see how this method here might work a little better. And in order to figure out our seat cut, we're going to do the same thing we did with two pieces of 2 by 4 except we're going to measure the top piece so that it works out with the desired measurement we want to have for our seat cut depth. And if you're using square lumber, you should have a gap here. However, you're not going to have a gap on the other side. And in order to make this pattern here, we're just going to measure from here to here and then subtract the amount we want to have for the desired depth of our seat cut. And here I'm making my seat cut about 3 8 of an inch at the top here. So the next step would be to trace all the way around the 2 by 4 so that you end up with lines looking like this. Then we will use a straight edge like a framing square to extend the line forward. And by now you get a good idea what this seat cut is going to look like. And of course everything is nice and straight. Like I said, you're extending a straight line here that is parallel to the building foundation. And you're going to do the same at the bottom so that you end up with two seat cuts. And of course we have a new seat cut. And this one here is going to provide us with an additional benefit. However, you might not be able to do it all the time. So for example, if you have a structural engineer involved in the project, you might need to ask them if you can cut into the framing lumber. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to the original seat cut I had that was about an eighth of an inch here because sometimes the engineer isn't going to allow you to notch into the lumber this much. However, as we're going to see here in a little bit, I will provide you with the reason why I did it that way. Because it's going to provide us with a better structural connection. However, keep in mind that this is just an additional method. Another thing you can do. And often in my videos I provide you with multiple variations that will provide you with a similar result. And of course one more thing I need to mention and this is very important. And that would be to lay out and even cut your pattern that you're going to use to lay out the rest of the roof rafters. However, don't even think about cutting the rest of the roof rafters until you've checked to make sure this one actually works. So for example, after you frame the walls and brace them off to where they're not moving, 
throw the roof rafter up there and see if it actually works or if you need to make any type of modification to it. And with that said, I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the video comment area and I will answer them as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed the video and you're a regular follower, I shouldn't have to tell you what to do. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video.